Mr. Trump going around the media, literally going around them, to take his message directly to the people. We're calling it the Twitter presidency. Here's what he tweeted about this. If the press would cover me accurately and honorably, I would have far less reason to tweet. Sadly, I don't know if that will ever happen. And a large segment of the population agrees with Mr. Trump. Here's from the Huffington Post, a survey, 41% say he has faced unfair negative coverage. Joining us now is Brent Bozell, a Media Research Center president. Do you approve of this, leapfrogging over the establishment media, using Twitter to go directly to the people? Oh, sure. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> yeah, with oh, a sure. in a sec. Um, um, look, he's got 25 million uh, Twitter followers and, and Facebook fans. He can, he can uh, converse directly with them. And if the media cover his posts, his tweets, They've got to cover what he said. Um, that allows him to control the conversation. That said, uh, I would recommend that he change the tone of his tweeting. The candidate is one thing, the president is another. Uh, and I think that, that there's a call for that. But look, why does he do this? Because the press not only has not been fair, that, that poll that, that, that you just cited, it's a bit of a head-scratcher because other polling data have it far, far worse, whether it's USA Today, whether it's Rasmussen. Both of them had it at 10 to 1. We took a poll and we found it, it was 8 to 1 negative against Trump. That's the perception yeah. of the public. Yeah. And in fact, the coverage was 91% anti-Trump. Um, so, yeah, he's got a point by saying that if he doesn't need to talk to them, he's not going to. I guess it was a high number for the Huffington Post. That's, I guess that's why we said a large chunk of the population. But that's a Huffpo, um, Huffington Post poll, I'll give you that. Um, what do you yeah. make of uh, this from the New York Times? They have added more than 200,000 digital subscribers. I guess that's paying customers who are going to read the Times online. That's since late September. I mean, could you say that Donald Trump is helping to save the New York Times? Because well, this increase in subscriptions is largely, I, th I suspect, it's because of Trump. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, look, if you're on the, on the left and you are looking for a, a, um, a common ground and you're looking for someone to give you aid and comfort with this monster coming on as president of the United States, um, it's a rather natural thing that you go to the New York Times <laughs> because that's going to be the outlet that's going to be attacking this man and, and it's going to give you comfort. So yeah, I see, I see those numbers growing. I've seen uh, uh, CNN and others growing as well uh, because of their opposition to Trump. However, I see them being neutralized and I see them being neutered again because Donald Trump will go around them, and not talk to them, and he'll communicate directly with the public. Got a couple of headlines for you. First one from the New York Times about uh, the state of the economy as President Obama leaves office. The first one from the Times reads, President Obama is handing a strong economy to his successor. And look at this from Politico, Trump inherits Obama boom. Now, I know you're not a financial kind of guy, uh, but you know when a boom is happening to the American economy and when it's not. And I take it you agree with us that it's not happening right now. Well, I think by any objective measure, it's not Thank happening. You. you don't have to be Art Laffer to understand that. You know, and the American people are no fools. 55% of the public believe that the country is on the wrong track. When you have got a growth of 2.1% annually, and they call that a boom? When you've got 48 million people, think about that, uh, 43, 43 million Americans on food stamps, how in the world is this the boom? When you've got 95 million Americans not in the workforce, how is this a boom? That's an all-time high, by the way. No, this is spin, spin, spin. You know, Brent Burzell, I'm sorry this interview is so short because I just get the feeling you're warming up. Right towards the end, the fire in the belly is emerging, the big laugh. I wish we could keep you longer. We've got these hard breaks. You know how it is in the media. Thank you, Stuart. Anytime. Brent, you're a good man. Anytime. Thanks very much.